All right, we're going to move uh, from the Atlantic, uh, moving over to the Caribbean. Now, where is the Caribbean? Well, it's actually by the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to talk about the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico all in one. Uh, this area down here is the Caribbean Sea. Uh, this is the Gulf of Mexico. As you can see, it's much smaller um, than the entire Atlantic Ocean. Right? Um, we said that the Atlantic Ocean covered uh, about 20% of the Earth's surface, 29 million square miles. Right? The Caribbean Sea only covers about 1 million square miles. So 29 million for the Atlantic, uh, way over here, all of this area. Right? This is only 1 million square miles back over there. All right, kind of give you the north up again. So we're talking about just the Caribbean Sea. You can see there's um, kind of this, uh, this ridge here, uh, which kind of borders uh, the Caribbean Sea, this uh, circle of islands and things like that. Uh, now the deepest part still does go down pretty uh, deep in the Yucatan Basin uh, right around here, uh, down to about 25,216 feet. Right, 25,000 feet, um, still pretty deep, about as deep as the Atlantic Ocean, right? That went down to about 28,000 feet. Um, but you can see pretty much uh, enclosed sea as opposed to the uh, ocean, which is open. So the sea is more of an enclosed area, right? Um, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, as we move up, this is the Caribbean Sea. Uh, we're going to move up to the Gulf of Mexico here. We're pretty familiar with that uh, being where we are. That is the Gulf of Mexico. There we go. Um, you can see much a lot of shallow area all around here, um, and then not quite as deep. So it's only got about uh, 600,000 square miles, actually 598,000. Um, the average depth there is only about, it's uh, just less than 5,000 feet, 4,960 feet. So very shallow Gulf of Mexico compared to the Caribbean Sea or the Atlantic. So you can see the shape, as I zoom out a little bit, the shape of these enclosed seas is really going to have a big determination on the currents that flow through there. Um, the depths of the sea are going to determine you know, the temperatures and where they are. Uh, in relation to the equator. Um, some of the major ports there are going to be Houston and New Orleans, right? Um, two of the biggest ports, and they're really uh, oil-based ports, um, but New Orleans is important because it goes up the Mississippi River. It gets all of these things, as we learned during the uh, Civil War, um, the crops and everything else all kind of flow down here, get out, uh, and then are able to go over to the Atlantic and cross the sea, right? Um, there are some pretty important ports down in Mexico. Uh, unfortunately, I really am not very good at pronouncing them. But you can see, once again, another big port um, grew up uh, around a sheltered bay. Uh, good for getting out into the main sea, right? Connected to Gulf of Mexico and out to the Atlantic, right? So big port down there in Mexico. Um, Havana, Cuba. Uh, another important area. Now, Cuba, uh, not on the friendliest terms with the United States. It goes way back to uh, the 60s, uh, the Cold War, Fidel Castro, and um, you know, it kind of goes into some of the history there. But Cuba has not been on, on very good terms with us um, for a very long time. But they are very important strategically because we talked about choke points before, you know, if they were able to kind of mine this area and this area, they would be able to close off all shipping in the Gulf of Mexico, right? Um, the Caribbean in general, um, and I'm talking about you know the, the Caribbean Sea down here, Gulf of Mexico, or Caribbean Sea mostly down here, doesn't have a whole lot of uh, mineral resources. Um, there are some oil fields um, down by Venezuela down here. Um, but most of the oil fields are going to be over here in the Gulf of Mexico. You can kind of see it just because they're easier to get to. It's a lot shallower. We don't have to get down quite as far. If you even have to go down to some of the deeper water ones, down like 5,000 feet, um, that's much easier than trying to go down to 25,000 feet, right? Um, but because of all those you know, oil fields and things like that, sometimes things do go wrong. Uh, maybe we'll remember back in 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Uh, spilled about almost 5 million barrels of oil into the Gulf. Um, that really affects the shipping, 
Uh, it also affects the ecology of the, the area. Um, and fishing. Fishing is very big here because, you know, uh, you know, you can see there's a lot of area along the coast that people get their, their meat, um, food from. So very important to uh, the area and things like that, the uh, oil spills kind of break up that natural uh, ecology in the system. But believe it or not, uh, most of the fishing in the area is actually considered small scale considered to other areas like we talked about um, up in northern Europe. Um, most of the stuff is kind of caught and then eaten fresh along the coast. Um, there are some of the other, you know, larger areas might ship up, freeze it and ship it. Um, but most of it, you know, is not as large as some of the, uh, the others that we'll talk about. Um, like I said, Houston, Texas, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana are two of the major ports. There's other small ones like uh, Mobile Bay, uh, Port Arthur, Texas, Galveston, uh, Tampa, Florida. They're all, you know, important uh, ports also, but these have really those access to, you know, Houston can kind of bring in all the, the stuff from the roads without having to go too far down. And then Louisiana has that shipping lane that comes all the way down from the north. Um, strategic uh, geography, uh, you know, the big thing there, like I talked about, you know, this is kind of a show point, but that's still a fairly large area. Um, before I go into strategic geography, we do have a large um, naval air station here. It's actually considered the uh, home of naval aviation. Uh, it's where all pilots, uh, all aviators in the military, in the Navy, um, go to train, start their training. Um, and we train a lot of people from uh, other countries because we have one of the, uh, the best um, training programs in the world. So strategically, uh, the Panama Canal um, down here, we'll kind of zoom in to it, see what it looks like, goes all the way across um, this, uh, this area, right? It kind of started as a natural, but we, they, they kind of cut it in. Well, the United States was very uh, involved with this, and it's about 100 years old now. Um, we've turned it over uh, to the local uh, country, Panama, right? You can zoom out and see, you know, it cuts right through, and... There, that was not always there. That's a man-made canal. Um, we can get some of the largest ships in. If you look in your book in page 191, you can actually see two ships going through the canal. Now, the sea level on both sides is not the same, so they have to have these big locks to kind of transfer these ships. Pretty uh, amazing feat of uh, nature. Uh, we won't go into it too much, but it is, it is pretty impressive. Um, and they're actually expanding it uh, and trying to, uh, to build it up more. So why is that uh, such an important choke point? Well, couldn't you say, well, you know, if they choke it off, we could just go around. Well, let's take a look at the size of the United States, all right? There's the United States, all right, and there's North America, right? It takes up pretty much most of the globe. Well, let's say you wanted to go around. Going up north, we're going to learn about in a little while. It's not the easiest option. So let's say you want to go around the south. Well, look at South America. Look, look how big that is, all right? Trying to go all the way around here and then come back up to go into some of these areas in Europe, that's a really, really long route. So uh, that's an, a major choke point if they ever decide they just don't want to let us through. Um, and it's not just something we can kind of steam through. There's a lot of uh, locks that have to be manually controlled um, to get through. So uh, very, very important strategic part of the world. Um, Cuba, like I said, also a very important part. Um, but... Uh, Cuba has this little thing um, that the United States has an indefinite treaty uh, and part of it. So we're going to zoom in um, so you can see Guantanamo Bay. It is actually a bay. But everything you see uh, in yellow there, kind of center it, um, is United States territory. All right? uh, we entered an uh, indefinite lease with the Cubans um, back in 1903. Uh, and we said we could stay there uh, until we get tired of it, all right, um, up to the Arctic Ocean. So the Arctic Ocean, um, as you can see, it's all the way in the, uh, the North Pole there. Uh, kind of zoom out, see the top of the world, all right, there's the United States, there's Russia, all right. Do we go north up? Well, it doesn't really matter. All right. 
So uh, the Arctic Ocean, uh, as you can see, I'll click on it. You know, like I said, right there in the top of the, the Earth, it doesn't really look like it, but it's iced over most of the year. Um, it actually extends quite a bit down, as you can see. Uh, the official place on uh, Google uh, Earth said that the Arctic Ocean was over here, but it extends pretty far down, right? Um, the rough ice coverage, I'm going to pop up some white areas. You can see up on the top of your screen there as we're moving around. Well, that's pretty much where the ice comes down to, right? And then the other side, pop it over on that side. The, uh, the ice will extend all the way down through Greenland, right? So what does that look like on the top of the Earth? Well, you know, you can see most of the time in the, the winter months, the Earth or the, uh, the ice covers most of this North Pole. So why is that important? Well, we're talking about sea lanes and things like that, right? Well, wouldn't it be great if instead of having to, you know, go, because if we're looking at it, you know, what's the easiest way to get from here to here? Well, it's straight. If you look on a flat map, it actually looks like it's going to go like this, but that's actually curved, right? So from here to here, that's pretty easy. Well, what about, you know, some of these vast oil fields over here, right? Now we've got to go all the way down, around, through the Panama Canal, you know, the Panama Canal to close, got to go all the way down to the bottom, right? Wouldn't it be great if you can get those vast oil fields from over in this area straight over and down here? Well, that's called the Northwest Passage, right? It's something they've been wanting to get for years. There's also the Northern Sea Route um, on the other side and Russia. They would love to be able to get their oil from over here over to here on tankers easily. But you can see that white sea, you know, white ice, area kind of blocks that off. Now in the summer months sometimes it does kind of the ice recedes and only takes up the cap um, and with global warming there, there has been some of these these areas but really it's not reliable enough it's still pretty treacherous to try and get through there you can see trying to navigate through all those little bitty islands uh, can get pretty rough so um, you know those areas until the you know sea levels rise and we're all have gills. Uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, like I said, oil uh, is going to be a big uh, part of the area um, of importance. Uh, fishing also very important. Up uh, down here in the uh, Norwegian Sea has been a very large um, fishing area for many many years. Big sea fish uh, shipped all over to uh, to Europe and the United States. Barents Sea also, uh, you might have seen uh, some of those ship or shows in Discovery Channel about you know Alaskan king crabs and things like that. They're they're going up into some of these areas, right? Uh, Alaska, once again, another um, big area over here. Um, that's going to be one of the big. Uh, um, Oil terminal, oil, oil areas, right? They can ship out stuff from Atlanta, or I'm sorry, from Alaska. Um, and then over on the Russian side, you know, they've got a couple of areas. Their uh, their northern fleet is going to be up here on the uh, the northern side also, and here, right? So they're able to get their northern fleet out, kind of getting getting you all around, right? They get their northern fleet out, so they don't have to go through that choke point down there that I talked about before. And kind of sneak out up, up, uh, into the open ocean. 